Hi, I'm Michael, and this is an overview. Uh, well, it isn't an overview. This is really the first uh, step into information architecture. And I just wanted to make it a little bit easier for a lot of you to understand, like, why, again, is this something you'd want to do? What are some of the things you already have experienced and already are aware of that apply itself to this somewhat new world? Remember, the new world uh, that we talked about is the one of the hyperlink, where Everything connects to another thing and to access and to navigate information, uh, which is a loaded term, information. We, we, we in our last videos talked about you don't get to information immediately. You actually have to do a fair amount of work to get to that point. But at this point, we'll, uh, we'll just call it information. You know, the, you're navigating it to solve problems, learn, be entertained, you know, so many things, just as we have done forever when it comes to most of our printed books, uh, movie theaters. Uh, you know, again, the, there's a huge variety of different analogs to what information architecture picked up upon and wanted to try to improve upon. And this first week, I'm actually recommending two videos that aren't this video, uh, both of which are by authors uh, and and creative people. One is named David Weinberger, who is uh, wrote a book about uh, basically how there's just too much stuff, you know, that there's just too much of uh, information, which is a great big theme. And uh, the video that he goes into is why there's some good positives to that. And there's also some things that you have to know moving or trying to make sense of a world where one's opinion may be as good as another person's opinion and the that authorities and other things that help us turn information into knowledge is kind of went into that that authority is very fraught and has a lot of uh, problems with it one of the consequences of this is that we are we have all learned i think over the past decade if we didn't know it already but now it's instantiated in our technology that the smartest person in the room is not the person at the head of the room done correctly it's the room itself the room is not the smartest person in the room that if you put people together connected in a web of difference where they're not all just saying the same thing but they're actually engaging in the ways that, that humans do iterating over differences that network of people is smarter than any of the individuals and we've experienced this in our best classrooms and we've experienced it on the on the mailing list that we stay on where there's a set of knowledgeable people where it's better to be on the mailing list than simply to be listening to any one particular person. Some of which are, are real problems and some of which may not be real problems. And this is a fairly long video. It's about an hour long, but I think he's really entertaining. I learned a lot from him as I've learned from many other sources to try to bring it all together to make it something that you can get your hands into and actually start doing. That's really my goal. You know, th So this is still lofty, just getting at the lofty part. The next person is another video. What I love about this video is I got to see the actual uh, one of not this particular version of this uh, talk, but I got to see this talk. And I just thought it was very funny and very uh, entertaining how he, he comes up with this conceit of something that's very, very fake, but yet it feels slightly real. And anyway, he's sort of poking fun at, at certain conventions, but underneath it all, he's talking about what we like to do as designers. And designing is, is important that we create these containers. Yeah, and what we were actually gonna exchange. We could exchange it, we could play around with it, we could do things, we could invent, we could make new things. And there were many periods like this, not just the Cambrian explosion. I mean, it's kind of what allowed us to take like goats and combine them, you know, with other kinds of things and actually make human human drug producing goats, which you can now get transgenically um, recomposed. That's that would be unheard of, you know, if we didn't if we didn't think, you know, uh, you have to kind of think about that. But it turns out to be just a casual thing that we can now do. Um, who would have thought it? Right? Now. He actually talks about physical shipping containers as being a thing. Also, he talks about DNA as another container. Anyway, there's there's a certain uh, things that he goes to in the real world that have changed the way we've been able to um, handle uh, uh, complexities, which, which is great because complex things are hard and making them simpler and easier to digest. So these containers, I say, and as we begin to look at and maybe we can dissect some of these particular uh, 
uh, services is that there's a lot of containers out there. There are these uh, services that are help to take a certain piece of information, YouTube being one of them, right? Uh, let's say for now, YouTube is one where you, you kind of know, uh, by the way, when you say, when I say you kind of know, this is uh, uh, actually got a term uh, called a mental model. Some, someone may know what YouTube is, someone may not know. And if you tried to explain YouTube, you'd be like, well, it's a lot of videos. And they'd say, well, it's like television. Anyway, you get into a situation where it actually would be kind of hard to explain what exactly it is because it is a container of information. And, it, and its look and feel and its purpose can actually change. It can evolve over time because it's kind of a strong container. Uh, the video format, as we know it, I guess, is pretty well understood and contained by YouTube as well as others. Um, but you still have changes, and for whatever reason, a, a change right now might be TikTok. TikTok is another container. It's another shape. It's one might be considered more uh, television oriented. It's a, a portrait or landscape. Pardon me, landscape. You know, four three or widescreen. It's that that format and and resolution. Whereas uh, what. TikTok did well as it really dealt with portrait, you know, a phone orientation and put things into the right place with, for what looked right within that uh, particular format. So it really, you know, and it has a lot of connections of how it um, takes those videos that you produce, their customers produce, and how it uh, handles them. So. Anyway, can, all I mean is if you watch both of these videos, which I will link up, they're both terrific and they both are big thought starters about why and where does this go before we get into the basics of how do you do it. So big picture once again, uh, information architecture, just to reiterate, is a lot like also physical architecture and I try to draw some up. Um, experiences that you may have, whether it's navigating a new city, uh, whether it's navigating a new building or a place. You're looking for markers, you're looking for symbols, you're looking for things that are familiar to you so that you can do wayfinding. In um, a, a typical street, you know, in a town, you, you might not have a lot of rhyme or reason between what uh, buildings and sort of uh, experiences are in one place or in another place. You're like, well, this is commercial, this is residential. You you have these models in your head and sometimes, and hopefully most of the time, people who build out cities are trying to help you with signs or with some sort of convention as to having like a town square. So town squares are where uh, a bunch of businesses are all able to coexist so that you don't have to go travel very far to handle a wide range of needs. Uh, malls are, are another example. So you've got certain kind of architecture, certain kind of an expectation where you're very car focused on the outside and then on the inside you're very uh, pedestrian focused. It's a crazy idea, whereas most towns are the opposite where you're trying to have a more pedestrian. Anyway, these are all conventions that you may or may not be used to, but there are some that, that also have big analogs into how do we design and organize information so that you can find it. That's the important part. These conventions sort of trickle into and are influenced by, and also we want to leverage as much of these mental models as people have of how things work, how, how do things work in a virtual landscape versus a physical landscape. Uh, I don't think there's too much that I can unpack about the idea of wayfinding in physical space because I think it's it's th th there's a lot to go into. I do know in terms of architecture, one one idea that you're going to see a lot in information architecture is like large buildings where there's a somewhat identicalness to things. Like a big building, in in many ways, it's it's every floor is identical, practically. You might change some of the layouts, but you do know that you're dealing with this particular kind of space. So once you've gotten good at understanding how tall buildings work, you're pretty much able to figure out the next tall building. There isn't, there isn't a huge learning curve to find your way or to, to take advantage of it. And so these two videos, plus what I've described now, gets us up and running as to the big pictures and what we're trying to solve for.